Yeah. What a great song. Let's just wait for our faces to appear. All of a sudden, here we go. I hope everybody have an amazing time. What a what a great time to be alive. And uh, this is our first Zoom meeting via, um, well, via Zoom. Uh, we're going to have a great time tonight. We're going to just uh, ask just a few people just to come on quickly. And uh, um, we have a great guest tonight. Um, some of you don't know him. Some of you are well known with him. Some of you have been using his his, uh, his uh, material and um, leading people to Christ. Um, and uh, so maybe some of you don't even know that you've been using his stuff. But tonight we're going to have a uh, amazing time. So let us just first uh, greet a few people. Bianca, uh, Pietro, all the way from Cape Town. Wow. Yeah, please comment there on the, um, on the comment section where you're watching from. Um, where you're from. Where you're from. Uh, we are really excited about uh, tonight because it's a very relevant topic and the time that we are living in. So, uh, yeah, so welcome. Let's see. We are seeing a lot of uh, Yevonegwet people. Welcome, Yevonegwet Bitbank. Here we go. Good to see you, Tini. Hello, everybody. Donnie, there we go. Everybody on. Um, it's a great time. Let's just wait for a few more people. We're just going to say hello, send a wave, or if we can. Uh, so it's when we look well back from uh, uh, away from the camera. It's not that we're trying to be uh, rude or anything. It's just we got screens all over the place. So just there where you are, I'm going to ask you today not to tag everybody that is uh, that you think must hear this message. I'm going to ask you to tag someone that is that you think is a Christian. So tonight I'm going to I'm going to because tonight we're going to we're going to talk about evangelism made easy. So. Um, we, we, we're going to touch on a few topics. So tonight, before we go on, I'm going to ask you, just there where you are, just tag or share or whatever you want to do, just get the message out. Uh, everybody that you think is a Christian. So um, not many says, but let's say when you, when you think he's a Christian, tag him, share the message quickly. Estelle, yes, we, I've been talking a lot about you today. So uh, we've got exciting news, exciting things going on. So let's just go on. Um, Antoinette, hello, it's good to see you. Um, let's just wait for a few people. There we are, just tag a few people. Um, like I said, it's not that we get anything from this. We just, we have an obligation towards the gospel of Jesus Christ to get the message out. Yeah. So that's what we do. That's what we tell you every week. The same old story, same old story. Get the message out because somebody needs to hear this. Somebody, it's only good news if it reaches people in time. Otherwise, we're just news or bad news, old news. So you need to get the message out. Tag a few people. Let's just wait for them to come on. Um, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna keep you busy for more or less an hour. Um, but I want you to hear the message. We got a guy all the way from from America, but he's got a, he's his own story uh, by himself. So uh, I know he's from Ireland, living in the UK. Tra uh, well, stays in the US now, US at the moment. So um, I know he's got his own story. But I'm gonna ask you there where you are quickly, as quickly as you can. Share this this link, share this broadcast quickly, as quickly as you can. Yeah, if I, if I could just share something, uh, what we decided what we're going to do uh, is we're going to have a three week cycle that we're going to um, invite guest speakers in. And then to the relevant topic that we are discussing for that week. So for the next three weeks, we will be discussing uh, evangelism. We will be discussing the harvest um, that is ready. So and yeah, so that we're, we're going to invite some um, uh, guest speakers to come and share with us people that they live this daily. Uh, so, so that we can just be encouraged and um, just rekindle our fires in this time. So yeah, this, for the next three weeks, we will be sharing on the harvest, evangelism, on souls, on discipleship. And um, I think uh, it was such a great honor to meet um, uh, Scott McNamara when he was in South Africa last time. And uh, yeah, so we, but we will be sharing um, about the tools that he have and the, how we've been using it and how we have been seeing people coming to Christ, healings that took place. And, but we will, we will be sharing that uh, in a moment. So please share as, as fast as you can. Just just by a, by a wink, everybody can hear us, everybody do. The sound is good. Uh, let us just get the message out. Everybody can hear us. Like I said, we've got some new equipment. Every time you see us, we've got new stuff. 
uh, it's it's a, it's an amazing opportunity for us because we can't we can't do church the way we used to. And uh, like you at your workplace, or maybe there we are, uh, we are experiencing everything new at the moment. Uh, but without further ado, what we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to pray because I think that we have to open everything up in prayer. And Father, we just bless your name. Father, may every word that proceeds out of our mouths, Father, may bring glory to you and you alone. And Father, I know that this is so relevant for the time and the, and, 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 and the place that we are now. Father, the place where the world is now, Father, we are, we are, we are actually gearing up for the greatest harvest of souls to come into to, to, to the kingdom of God. Father, you promised us, Father, that there will be a great harvest. Father, but you said the laborers are few. And Father, tonight, as we speak, I know that the laborers, laborers are watching this broadcast. And today, the laborers are watching this broadcast. And Father, we just need the tools like you gave your disciples. We just need tools to get the message out. And Father, we know that your gospel is still the power to salvation. And Father, that's what we're holding on. And that's still... That will still be our, our main point, Father, will be the gospel, the good news of our Lord and, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, okay, can everybody just, uh, is, the, is the sound better? Is the sound worse? Are we getting, are we getting over there? I don't want to, I don't want to. Um, well, so I'm going to, I'm going to introduce Scott, uh, our unknown. So Scott McNamara, um, I've, I've met a few guys. I've met um, um Daniel Kalinda on the on the Rana Bongo Crusade. Uh, not really met him. I was there. And um, uh, was there, uh, Todd White. Todd White was one of the guys that I, I met. And, and he's the real deal. He's the guy that he's not talking. He's, that's what he does. He, everywhere he goes, he prays for people. I can tell you now, you don't want to go and be with him on an airport full of sick people. I promise you, not when you're in a hurry. Because he's got all the time in the world. And I promise you, he will pray for literally everybody. So he's the real deal. Daniel Kalinda, the real deal. And here's another guy that I met. is, is uh, Scott McNamara. The first time I saw him, the first time I met him, I know that he is the real deal. Um, so, Scott, without any further delay, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. Just tell about uh, first about your story. Just tell us just a, a brief, short description of who you are, where you come from, and uh, what we can expect from you tonight. Hey, good evening, everybody in South Africa. It's lovely to be with you guys. I'm very honored to be uh, your leaders. Um, it's a great privilege for me to join. I'm from uh, Liverpool, originally in England. Then I moved to Ireland after I met my wife, uh, and we spent 13 years there. And then I've been in America for almost two years, a little under two years, living in Washington State, just north of Portland, Oregon. And we are part of a church called the Promise Church here, where we are our leaders at the church. And we run our Jesus at the door ministry from, uh, from here. We're based here. And then we go from here out to the nations. And it's all about really teaching individuals to share the gospel, what we call in a reaping tool. So we like to awaken the sleeping church. You know, we want to awaken the, the sleeping giant in the area of evangelism and build the church so that the Great Commission wasn't evangelists it was given to disciples so we believe everybody has the power and everybody is called to make disciples so we want to give you the practice in order to make you a reaper and not just a sower amen so that was in the in the short description what event what what he does so I, I, from my side i just want to say that this is not something that he just talks it's something that he does that's something i've been watching his videos and you can watch his videos on on, uh, on uh, YouTube, you can watch your videos on, on different platforms, but I can tell you now, that's not something that he just talks about. That's something that he does, something that he lives. So Scott, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a few questions. So like I said, the program that will work um, tonight is, well. I'm gonna ask you a few questions, make, maybe make a few statements and just hear your point of view on the way the church is at the moment. So uh, first of all, I wanna, I, I wanna say that we really wanna answer some of the questions that we're gonna, we're going to have time. So all the questions that people or maybe just normal church goes, maybe people that want to go, the churches, maybe they have questions tonight and they want to ask you because I'm going to ask some of the relevant questions that I have um, um, in connection with evangelism. First of all, the church in evangelism and how relevant is evangelism really in, in the, this day and age? Because every, everything is going digital and everybody... Well, just everybody's got a mind. Not everybody I'm talking, I'm generalizing now. So what I say is that uh, 
some people, not all the people, some people have this thing that say, listen, this is my life, this is my story, just don't talk to me, I've got my own problem, I've got my own story, you just keep your distance, I keep my distance, and that's how we're going to do it. And uh, so how relevant or how, uh, first of all, we're going to ask, how do we approach people like that? But I'm first going to make a, a, a statement. So how would you say, how do we approach evangelism in this modern era? How do we, because how has uh, evangelism changed since the day that Jesus sent out the, the 12 or maybe sent out, maybe uh, started the first church with Paul and them? How is, how, how, how did the, the whole movement um, progress from there on? Are we still doing church the way we do? Are we still doing evangelism the way we used to? Um, so just your, your point of view on that. Yeah. Yeah, great question. I think that, I think what we need to do, we need to bring it back to, to basics for sure. You know, I think we've got, we've kind of veered off the track a little, uh, a lot in, in many areas. Um, I mean, it's a great question. Obviously there's a lot to it. What I would say, the, the main things that come to me when you, when you ask me that are, you know, we, I think we hone in too much on the word evangelism or evangelizing or it becomes it's like a sort of hat that we wear we're going to evangelize today i'm going to evangelize for one hour then i'm not going to and we have like we compartmentalized christianity into these areas where we do a bit of this i do this he does this uh, which which really isn't what christianity is about you know I, I mean what it's about are two things i believe it's about loving god and loving your neighbor I think, you know, Jesus said it, it, all the laws uh, uh, and all the commands can be summed up in those two things, to love God and to love your neighbor. So whatever we want to call it and however, however we want to dress it up, evangelism is just loving people. If I love somebody, well, I'm going to tell them about Jesus and I, I want them to be redeemed. I want them to be reconciled to God. I'm going to do the work of an ambassador of Christ to, to bring reconciliation between a, a lost soul, a lost child of God. Why? Because I love God and I love that person. I don't want them to spend eternity in hell. I don't want them to spend another minute on earth uh, uh, separated from this relationship with, with their father, uh, with their savior. So for me, it's about, it's about shifting this. I think our mindsets are wrong. I think we have a mindset where it's all compartmentalized. It's all of year after table. And let's just say, well, hang on. Do we love God? Really love? And if we do, are we my, our neighbor? Are we going to love others? And when we love our others, we will point them to the cross. I think we just need to get back to this of it and have a heart that says, I love. And everything is birthed out of that place. If that makes sense. I mean, that's just, you know, just to kind of the best foundation I can give. I mean, you can steer me uh, further in that, if you like. I'm just giving you the basic foundation, if that's helpful. Okay, so I, I love what you say. So, do you want to say something? I, I was just thinking about uh, what he was saying, that just love people. Um, I, I watched the um, Finger of God on Sunday, and uh, I watched where uh, you and Brian Walsh went into the bar, and that guy gave his life to Jesus and, and, and you asked him, did you ever thought that you will meet Jesus in a bar? And, um, and that, that was so amazing to me because I could see how the whole yeah. atmosphere changed because of love um, in the bar. Because what they expected to happen um, was it was totally something different. And that, that changed the whole perspective, it changed the whole atmosphere just by loving um, people that thought they were sinful, that they're not even welcome in the presence of God, and uh, but but they felt welcome because of love. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, and just as an example, just to pick up on that as an example, so that, that kid in the bar, uh, you know, what we did that night was we brought, we brought love, we brought Jesus to that place. Yeah. But then, but Jesus never said to go and get people to pray. Uh, and, and that's it. He said, he said, go make disciples. So that young man, became part of my new believers group and we walked this thing out with him we walked this journey of the lord with him so what what you know the, the the next level of the answer to the question is is to love people and share the gospel yeah but the next part of it which is to make it is make disciples and again you can't do that unless you're willing to really love 
because to make a disciple, you can't do it from your armchair. It's going to cost you emotionally, physically, psychologically, financially, like it's going to drain and going to pull from you in so many areas. You know, we like to quote uh, Matthew 28, 19, go make disciples of all nations. You know, it looks great on a bumper sticker, looks great on a fridge magnet. But the truth of it is not many people are willing to live that, that, that scripture because it hurts and it costs you. Uh, and mm -hmm. the cost is often too great for a believer to, to, to pay. You know, the Holy Spirit once spoke to me and said, if, uh, if you count the cost, I'll give you the loss. And he also said this to me, he said uh, that the measure you, um, so let me phrase this right, because it's, it's really key, it really actually uh, marked my life. That the measure, um, you, you, cannot, you can measure love by how much it costs you. This is what the Lord said to me. Sure. You can measure love by how much it costs you. So in order to, in order to go and share the gospel for one hour, that's, that's not costing me too much. It's costing me one hour. But in order for me to pour my life into another, that's going to cost me a lot. Now, Jesus didn't. What he did with 12 men is he lived with them. He ate with them. They slept in the same place. That They walked for hours. They talked. They, he opened up his life in order to pour into 12 men, in order that they could then pour into others and others and it goes on and on and on. of us want to do we want to do the safety and the confines of our church and then maybe one, one meeting a week that's not i don't believe that's what real discipleship is and that's not what real love is um so i think i think we need to just re realign our, our mind and our mentality and our mindsets in the way that we see it well well i i, I love i love what you're saying so for for us, um, and this is, I think, if if I would if I would make a survey and, and ask people, um, how many people are on on this chat just now, how many people made Christ through church? Let's say you, you went to the front. There was a pastor. There's a communicator. They communicate very good, and he said to you, "Listen, you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and uh, and um, um, that's that's how we do it." And then you raise your hand, and, and every, every pastor, that's the best part of of let's hope. That's the best part of your service is when you see people coming back to Christ. Um, let's hope for, for that. But um, I, I want to make a statement and say the church is still the most effective way for people meeting Christ. That's just a statement. But I've got a problem with the statement that I'm making myself. So the problem that I have is that um, maybe that's the only, the only um, um, background that I have for 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 going out and, and, and meeting people or or leading people to Christ, the the only way or the only the only idea that I have is that I need to bring people to church and people must accept Jesus Christ and and we all know if you're in a charismatic church, that's that service when you bring people for the first time, that is mo probably the the craziest service. People rolling around, people speaking in tongues, and people throwing up and all of that. And you thought you're going to bring him to a good place. We can just meet Jesus, just sit in this chairs, and he can just. Uh, but then, but then, I, I, I want to ask you. Like I said, I made the statement that church is still the most effective way because people have met, most of the people that's on this chat now have met Jesus at the church. But let's say, how will church look in a few years' time? How will church look in we even after after lockdown? I don't know if in, the, in America we still have lockdown that side, but. Um, how will church look after lockdown? Will we still do church the way we used to? Or is the gospel getting more relevant than, uh, than the four walls of the church? Is the gospel more important than the four walls of the church? Because I'm asking myself, do I love my neighbor enough to tell him about Jesus? Am I loving my neighbor enough? Uh, do I love people enough in front of the line? Because you know, all of a sudden we got enough time in queues. Because everywhere, every sto uh, story you go to, there's a queue. Do we love people who are waiting for church? At the moment, church in South Africa, the doors are not open. So my question is, how will um, evangelists, how will we get a church to get mobilized to get the message of the, of the cross and the message of Jesus out? How will we get people to, to get, um, well, mobilized, to get out, out of the four walls? Just to get, like you said, it's not, a, it's not a something that we do... Uh, in an hour every week, it is something that we live, something that we have to preach, something that we have, that, that should be a lifestyle. And um, how will we get people to get to a place where this becomes a lifestyle, not just a, a Sunday hour or so? Yeah, 
great question. I think I think the way we do it is through people like you, through people like you guys who who walk, who talk what you walk, who don't just you know don't just preach it. Or, or, or unfortunately, uh, many pastors aren't even preaching that we should win the lost. But thankfully for, for amazing uh, pastors like yourselves, what you're doing is you're not only telling your congregation what they need to do uh, according to scripture, uh, but what you're doing is you're actually doing it yourself. So I, I personally think it's going to shift when pastors uh, step up a little, when we not only, as pastors, we not only start uh, sharing it from the pulpit about this great commission, and have a, a, an outward focused church, but we also, but as pastors also uh, living, living it. I think that's a, a key thing. Now, I mean, uh, South African culture, I understand that a lot of people go to church, but still there are a lot of people that, that uh, so you're saying a lot of people on this call right now, they met the Lord through church and that's wonderful. Praise God for that. But unfortunately, there's too many, the, the, the percentages are there, are the, the vast majority are not hearing the gospel because they um and they're not coming to church yeah so what does that mean it means that us as believers we need to get out there now now in the early church they never waited for people to come to the the home setting or come to their church setting what they did is they advanced the gospel so they took it to a new town a new city a new village a new, a new country you know it was always advancing it was never waiting and what we've done is we, we've we have this culture now where we like to gather and it's like a safety thing where we like to be around each other. And there's nothing wrong with church. I love church. Our ministry works with the local church all over the world. So that's what we do. But the danger is when we become so comfortable in our buildings that we don't really feel that we need to go out and we wait for somebody to bring somebody in. But we're not going to reach the world if we just sit inside and wait for them to come. You can fast 24-7 for the rest of your life. And, and there will be a, the vast majority in your in your city nation who will not come to church unless you go and get them. So we need, we need people who can stand up and people who are willing to go to the people and meet them. I mean, for me, you know, I, I did, I, somebody came to me and somebody told me for most of the people I've met, I've led to the Lord. Well, nearly all of them, um, probably 99% I met outside of a church building. So, you know, I think we need to realize that, that, we need to leave the building. We're not going to, this mass exodus of lost people are not just going to descend upon our churches. We've got to go and get them. So the way we do that is by, is by our pastors, uh, you know, catching this vision and realizing and our, our, our cities are dying. Oh, then we need to reach them. And then all, and the other way is through evangelists. You know, God has gifted evangelists as part of the, the fivefold gifting. And we are called as evangelists to awaken and inspire and lead the charge for the churches. So some of the evangelists that you mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, you know, who do an incredible job. And, and that's what we're called to do as evangelists is to lead. And the role that God's given us uh, as Jesus at the door is to awaken the everyday believer. So you don't have to be all singing or dancing uh, evangelist or whatever. You know, you just be a regular disciple of Jesus. We're trying to awaken what we call the secret army. Those individuals who don't feel they can do it, they feel they're, they're maybe giving up on themselves. The devil's even given up on them because he's like, they ain't going to do nothing. Uh, they'll never amount to anything. Those people, we're looking to raise the, the secret army up. If we can get them enlisted and battle ready, we believe we could see a move of God we've never seen forever. I mean, so, so I'll allow what you say. Is even, you know, you know in, you're in a bit of a trouble when you think even the devil have, has given up on you. So... Uh, um, for me, I, I, I know exactly what, what you're saying is, is that um, I think that the, 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 the body of Christ is so waiting for people to stand up. And, uh, and, and, and most of the time, I've been preaching about this for the couple of weeks now. So many times we ask God, God, where are you in this time? Where are you in the time when troubles? And, but God has, has given, him, uh, given uh, the earth his body. And we are his body. So God is actually asking his body, where are you in this time? Where are you? But the thing is, we we are so scared of, of getting out from the walls. But so I'm going to ask you. Um, I think Kristen's got a, a, a video that she want to play for us. But before she she does, I just want to I just want to ask you just in a few short uh, few minutes. Just tell us what Jesus uh, at the door is all about, um, and then we're going to talk about evangelism, street evangelism, uh, growing church. Because I believe in my whole heart, and I think there's many pastors here 
that um, is struggling to grow their churches because they're waiting for other churches to 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 send them all the the people that they don't want. Um, and and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm saying this by the uh, really minimista respect, with the most respect I can say this. Many pa pastors think that they will grow their churches yeah. when they they just wait for the other church to 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 yeah. well just to to fail and then they're going to grab all those people and then they're going to they're going to grow church but the thing is uh, the church in in acts 5 we, we don't see that in the first church the first church they, they said we must you have to grow your church by new believers you have to get people from the street yeah. to come to your church so it's not waiting for the other church to fail but you need to get people from the street to come to church so um, and that's yeah. when we get to i don't want to preach i'm I want to, but I won't. No, I won't. Come on, so, you're good um, at it. You're so, good at it. <laughs> so, 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 please, if you can just quickly, um, just tell us what Jesus uh, at the door is all about, and then we're going to play a short clip, and then we're going to ask people to ask some questions because I know people, and I know I can see a, yeah. a few people here that's got a hunger for souls. I, I, I can see them here. I know some of them personally. They got a hunger for souls, but sometimes mm -hmm. they don't know how to approach. There's some things that maybe they, they've got question to ask so i'm going to ask you just quickly by in in a few few minutes um just tell us what jesus at door is all about and then we're going to play a video and then we're going to we're going to give over and ask people to ask some questions yeah uh, i mean let me just say this as well to you guys that that's what i love about your church and that's what i love about you you know when i was in south africa uh, the first time I came to visit your church. I, I had the privilege to speak at you guys, invited me to come and speak. And what I loved about your church is the atmosphere is is uh, fresh, new believers. It's kind of that atmosphere. You know, you guys really live this thing out, which is why I, I found such an affinity with you guys and, and connected. So I, I love I love that um, about you guys. Um, what, what, what I would say is... Um, the way I would describe it, let me, let me describe it this way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's breaks and smashes those preconcept preconceptions of like, I can't do it. It's too hard. What if they see this? What if they do this? It smashes all that stuff and it gives the individual uh, a, a tool. It gives the individual a practical means of bearing fruit this is this is what it's doing so so for me that is uh sorry one second i just have to tell my kids to be quiet i'm on a call here sorry guys um sorry guys family of four real life so you know it's it's about having something that can take you from a place of just wanting to do it and turning you into somebody who, who actually does it so that's kind of what we give we give nine points that were birthed on the harvest fields on the streets with non-believers and we give this to an individual and we say read it and when you read it you're partnering with the holy spirit because he birthed these each of these nine points and in, in partnership with the spirit he's going to cause you to bear fruit no uh, I like to. We also yeah, we're also we're, the, we're, we're also we're also family of four, so we know exactly what you're talking about. So okay. for us, it's a, it's a, I'm just it's moving a away. Just to get, it's okay. I'm, I'm moving from the kid, moving away from the kids, so it's all quiet. There we go. Norm, normally, what we have to do is we have to leave, so we just get yeah. in the car and just leave them behind, and then just uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And then we we we, we uh, threaten them with the with the rapture. So um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> So I'm joking. Everybody, that was just a joke. So we don't think to know kids with the rapture. So um. yeah, I, you know, I just I, uh, we we went to um, with Emma and um, with Brad to love. We went to Thailand uh, last year, and uh, we we used the Jesus at the door uh, card. They translated for us into Thai because uh, it, when you when you get to a country and you really have the gospel burning inside of you, and you get there, and they cannot speak one word English. That's a problem. So the, the language bar barrier was such a problem, but we have the card, the Jesus at the door, the nine steps. So when we hit the streets at night, what we did, we, we worked with the, the Dog in the Six Steps industry.
So we went out at night and then we just showed them that card. So they, had, they read the card. We showed them everything. And we saw so many healings. We saw salvations. We even had um, the privilege to, to sit with a legit uh, um, fortune teller. She was busy with her tarot card. So we took out our card and we put it there mm -hmm. and we shared the gospel with her. And it was so easy. And I spoke to Andy the other day and I said to him, you know what? This Jesus at the door, it's such a, it's so easy. It's so, it, it's anointed. It's a really anointed tool because it was birthed from, from uh, I believe that, that God showed you this thing and that's why it's anointed. And, and, and anybody who, I, I know we're going to show the video now, but go and, 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 and download that app um, because it really helps you if you are a little bit of, um a skeptic or you're a, you've got fear to reach out take that tool i promise you you will see what god does when you go through those steps um with a person that is unsaved yes uh, even in, even in our church we saw so many people that came back to me and said listen i was sitting in the in the queue at the at SARS. i was sitting there and two people uh, saw the card and they well they led people to christ right there and then so uh without further ado we're just going to play a short clip we're going to we're going to put the whole clip um, the, at the end of the uh, at the end of the video. We're going to play. We're going to play the whole clip. But we're just going to just for a few minutes. We're just going to play the clip quickly so that people will know that uh, what we're talking about. So here we go. at the door is framed around nine points in a picture. The first three pertain to the picture we call that the blue zone. The next three symbolize sin, we call that the red zone. And finally, the last three reveal repentance and we call that the yellow zone. Let's look at the blue zone. The first thing we ask is permission. Now, it's not written on the card, but I believe you're intelligent enough to remember. That. Excuse me, can I ask you a quick question? I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever seen this picture before? Do you ever pray? Have you ever seen this picture before? Um, do you ever pray? I haven't seen it. This is Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. The handle is on the inside. Only you can let him in. Now, this is a picture of Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. Okay. As you can see, the door handle is on the inside, which means only you can let him in. Okay. Lots of people pray. Praying is like talking through the door. You know he's there somewhere but you don't know him personally. Now, lots of people pray, yeah? And praying is like talking through the door. You know he's there somewhere, but you don't know him personally. Now we're going to look at the red zone. Visualize wearing a backpack on your back. If we filled it with all of your sin, would it be a heavy bag? Right. Now, if you had a bag on your back like me, and we put all your sins in the bag, would it be heavy? Would it be a heavy bag? Right. You're real heavy. Come on. I'm just you. Exactly. Nobody's I'm perfect. That represents your debt with God. It stops you having a relationship with him. And that's what he wants. He doesn't want your religion. That bag represents your debt with God. It stops you having a relationship with him. And that's what he wants. He doesn't want your religion. If you owed the bank $10,000 and I gave you a check for that amount and you deposited it into your account, what would happen to your debt? Now, if you owed the bank $10,000 and I wrote you a check for that amount and you deposited the check in your account, what would happen to your debt? Go away. Go away. How would you feel? Good. Good, yeah. That's what Jesus did for you on the cross. He wrote you a check signed in his blood and he's standing at the door of your heart wanting you to cash it in. What Jesus did on the cross, he wrote you a check in his blood, yeah. signed in his blood. And he's standing here today at the door of your heart wanting you to cash it in. If Jesus were here right now, would you let him in? Now, if Jesus were here right now, would you open that door and let him in? Oh, it would be a party, man. It would be a party right here. Yeah. you let him in? But yeah, of course. Come on, come on. Can you see the wind? No, but you can feel it, right? Just like the wind, Jesus is here right now. Can I ask you, can you see the wind? Can I see the wind? Can you see the wind? Not bad. I can feel it, yeah. And I believe Jesus is here right now. Can I pray for you to feel his presence? Man, can we pray for you? Yes. All right, let's Father, will you bless our brother right now in Jesus' name? Thank you that you love him. And I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you'd show him 
whether you're knocking on his heart, you don't want his religion. Religion happens outside the door, relationship happens inside the door. And what you're looking for is a relationship because you love him so much. So we ask you, Lord, change the atmosphere where he's standing right now and let him feel your presence. Let him know you love him. You're knocking on his heart today. You're saying, son, I don't see the bad. I just see the good. And I want to I want to bring you into this relationship and give you a brand new life. So would you let him feel it right now? Change the atmosphere. Just pierce his heart with that great love from his head to his toes. Wash over him in love and show him when you hung on the cross, you paid for everything. And you're here today with a check written in your blood. And you're saying, son, I've already paid your debt, but you got to cash the check. Let me in. I've already written it in my blood. Let me in and cash this check by giving me all your bad and accepting all my good. So let him know right now you offer him that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Do you want to follow him? So the last thing he wants from you is this. You're going this direction in life without Jesus. He wants you to turn around, change direction, and follow him. Okay? Do you want to follow him? Absolutely. Come on. If the person says that they want to follow Jesus, we're going to pray with them Amen. to accept the Lord. I like to give a little introduction to them to explain what exactly they're doing. If I came to your home, mm. I wouldn't come in unless you invite me in. So here we go. Wow, wow, Scott, what a what a what a great uh, testament. What a great time. And uh, I've seen I've seen Muslims coming to Christ with with that uh, with that paper. I've seen Muslims uh, meeting Jesus Christ for the first time. So I, I like I said, I, I don't want to I don't want to sell the thing. I don't work for you, um, but I can say I can one thing I can say is this thing works, and it's so easy. I think that's uh, whenever Jesus said uh, he said uh, he will confound the wise. Um, because for, for, for the wise, the gospel is actually foolish. So um, that's my own translation, just, just on, on a lighter note. Um, but for, for me, is that this, the gospel is so easy. It's so easy. It's so, but it's the power. It's, it's, it's the power of God to salvation. And we've been praying for, for revival, but the thing is revival first starts with you and revival, the last movement. And, and that's just, I didn't re receive a vision from God. I didn't hear a voice from God. I'm just reading my Bible. That's it. So for me, the last harvest is that people will reach out to other people. We be, first of all, we're going to be the body of Christ that touches and reaches out to the to our neighbors, to our, uh, our direct fans. So um, when I read the um, um, uh, Acts one verse eight, and we all know it's, it's a it's a for the charismatic movement. This is your scripture. I can tell you now. This is the one that you want to remember. Uh, not the uh, Romans 8, 1 says uh, there's no condemnation. No, no, no. This is the one. Uh, Acts 1 verse 8. It says uh, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We all know that scripture. For me, personally, is that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit to be my witnesses. And I think he ends of that scripture and says you will be my witnesses in Samaria, Judea, to the end of the earth. So we mm. need to get to a place that said that the gospel, the gospel of just souls, and, and I, I know my wife has got this great thing, uh, God saves people, but we need to make disciples. Mm. So I know what you do at the moment, before we're going to touch on Acts 1 verse 8 again, I know what you do is you always direct people back to church or to, uh, to a, 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 a new believers group. Can you just uh, tell us quickly in a few words, um, what does a new believers group look like? Um, uh, and what do you do when rejection comes? What do you do when, uh, when the guy says, listen, I don't want to hear anything about your Jesus. Um, but because I want to, I want to tell people, I think you said in, in America, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. I was in England just now. Um, but I must tell you now, Scott, at the moment where South Africa is now, I was in a, in a school you know, a, a couple of uh, uh, months ago. I was uh, preaching at the school. And then most of the, the stories that we grew up with in the Bible, well, the kids, don't know, they don't know it anymore. So it's almost like it's, it, there's a generation gap 
that we, and I think we will not convert people with, convert, well, save people with nice stories. You can only save them by the truth. And I think we need to get back to basics, get back yeah. to, to, the, to the basic core of, the, of, of God. And that is people. And you cannot, you cannot say you love people if you do not spread the gospel. And, and yeah. so just in a few words, I, I don't want to preach. I, I really, I don't want, I want to, but I won't. I won't. So um, what I'll do is just tell us quickly, what, what, do you, uh, what, do you, what is a, a new believers group? What, what do you do when people say, I don't want to? How long do you have to stay in a new believers group? Uh, what is your relationship afterwards? Because some of us just need people to cross and then they just say goodbye. It was nice meeting you. I uh, hope to see you again in heaven. And then we go. So can you just quickly tell us where does um, mm -hmm. uh, spreading the gospel and then afterwards the aftercare of the gospel um, uh, of, of, of saving people? Just quickly tell us. Yeah. So, I mean, you said that you just said that, you know, rightfully so, how they can't get saved without without the truth. And, you know, the truth was a person and the truth was Jesus, you know. So what what the, what our uh, tool hinges on, what Jesus at the door hinges on is an introduction to the truth. We're trying to introduce them to the person of truth who is Jesus. So that's what it all hinges on. If Jesus were here right now, would you let him in? And then we pray the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus as only he can. And then that individual is like, OK, now I I, I, ex I just experienced the truth that, you know, I want to meet him. I, I want to follow him. So. Just, that, just to kind of say that that's what it all hinges on. Uh, that's the kind of truth behind the whole, uh, the whole tool is an introduction to Jesus. And, and you, can, you can talk somebody into being a Christian. Um, and what I mean by that is you, you can give them a level of rhetoric. You can uh, use apologetics. And again, all these things like no, no slides against them. You know, there's a place for everything. But what I mean is you can, you can uh, you can have a deep conversation with an individual. You can win them intellectually. But I believe if you can talk somebody into being a Christian, then somebody else can talk them out of it. What they need is an encounter. You see, because when they fall in love, you can't, you can't talk somebody out of falling in love with your wife. You know what I mean? But if, you're, if your basis for your relationship is because you thought it through intellectually that it would be a good idea to marry this lady, it would be a good idea to love her, if it only stays in here and doesn't sift down to here, then, then there's no weight behind it. So we need people to have an encounter. So what we do is we allow the Holy Spirit to give them that encounter. Um, and I think where, where we've got it wrong a little bit in the church these days is people have thought that, that uh, believers have thought that encounter can only happen through a miracle. That encounter can only happen through a healing where actually that's, that's not true. An encounter can happen through the presence of God. So you don't need to see a miracle. You don't need to see a healing in order for somebody to be marked eternally by the, the presence and the power of God an encounter. And, and that's what we're trying to do with what we do. So when, when an individual uh, accepts the Lord, we go through what we call a follow-up process where we uh, get the individual, we get their contact details, and then we reach out to them within a few hours. We, we make a connection. Making disciples is making friends. So if you never... If you never kind of uh, make a friend, if you never reach out to a person, you're never going to make a disciple. You know, I describe it this way. When we all went to school, uh, when our first day at school arrived, you look around the, the, the schoolyard and you think, I don't know a soul here. I, I feel very alone. Now, you have a decision to make. You either step out of your comfort zone to make friends or you, you remain alone. And obviously, we know that we all uh, eventually step out of the comfort zone. Why do we do it? Because we know that it is for our betterment. We know that for our growth as an individual right now, if I'm going to proceed in this school life, then I'm going to go out of my comfort zone. I'm going to make a friend, make a friend. You see what we do is we count the cost and we know that we need it. Now, unfortunately we don't do that as a Christian, but the truth of it is, is unless we make disciples, we're not going to grow as individuals in this thing. We're all called to do it. So we, we have a decision moment. And what many people do is they say, it costs me too much to go into the yard and speak to a bunch of strangers. I'm going to stay here and I'm not going to do it. But what happens is they begin to, uh, they begin to, uh, to suffer for this as a believer. You know, I believe that, that every single Christian is called to, to make disciples and to be uh, active in this soul winning process. And when we don't do it, we get distracted and, and our gaze turns on to other things. It's like a, a baby nursing at the mother's breast. That baby knows that there is more. You see the baby's head when you have a 
newborn, the baby will move around. When I used to hold my babies, they would, they would make their way from here down to here because they're looking for more. They know innately that, that there is something more that I can get from this person. I need nutrients. I need sustenance that this individual can give me. And I believe that we have a, a lot of believers who are looking around and trying to nurse at the breast to find our sustenance. But they don't know and they don't realize that it is souls that can give them that sustenance. So that is what that's what we're trying to empower people to do. So as they accept that as an individual accepts the law, we reach out to them and we invite them along to what we call uh, we call it revive new believers. It's about bringing people back to life, bringing them back to the, the the identity that God first called them to be, without the world's lies and agendas. So we have an environment where we meet weekly, and individuals will come and they'll be around uh, other new believers, and then we'll take them through a very simple uh, process which you know we have um, a teaching booklet on that and, and it's uh, called that we have on our, on our website but it's very simple it's it's just things of our, our tagline is the holy spirit is the star of the show so evangelism is built around partnership now obviously i know how i don't have too much time to go into it but let me just tell you this i think this is really key so when i stepped onto the streets i didn't know what evangelism was i just i just thought that i had to be really good at something i didn't think i was really good at until the Holy Spirit said, look at all, all the people and imagine they are like apples on a tree when you share our shake. And when the Holy Spirit showed me this analogy, it made me realize that evangelism is partnership. It's like a dance. And the Lord of the dance is inviting you into a dance with him. And together you have this moment where he moves and you move accordingly. He moves, you count to move. And this beautiful synergy between you and the Holy Spirit as you move together as one in order to reap the harvest. And for me, the Great Commission, you know, it, it, it wasn't called the Great Mission, it was called the Great Co-Mission because I believe it is an invitation to partnership. So the Holy Spirit is giving that invitation to every single blood-bought believer. It is down to them whether they accept it or not. So the, um, new believe, a new believer group is all about loving people. When, when a baby gets born, I don't, I don't know if they do it anymore. When a baby gets born, they used to put babies in, in a room and they would have them all in their, in their little uh, baskets or whatever, uh, in their little plastic trays. And then the parent would come in and collect their baby. So in that moment, you've got a whole bunch of babies lying in a room together. They're looking around at, at each other. And they're like, hey, they're the same as me. Room full of brand new babies. And then the parent comes in and takes that child. Now, what, what happens here on after depends upon the parent. You see, the parent takes the baby. Some babies grow into, into uh, amazing individuals, a prosperous life and, and a healthy life. Other parents take babies and they don't give them the care they need to grow. That is what we are called to do is a new book. Once somebody Christ, we don't leave them in a begin to love them and model to them what this life looks like. And dependent on what we do, it is a result in that individual growing or not growing accordingly. Our new believer group is a, is a room where all those babies get loved and, and learn how to grow and they mix with each other. They can relate to each other. They can say, hey, he's just like me. She's just like me. And th through that process, we allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on them and to revive them. And, uh, you know, I can, if you like, I can tell you the process um, uh, of how that works, but that's going to take a few minutes. So I'll let you guys direct me. Okay, so um, I, I love what you say. Um, so I, I wish we had much more time. I said we're gonna we're gonna spend time like an hour or so with uh, with you. So yeah. uh, what uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, while we wait for some questions to come on uh, on the screen quickly, um, I just wanna I just wanna add on to to that. I remember the day I got saved. It was in a, it was in a, a AFM church at a women's meeting on a Thursday morning, and there was one lady. With all the old tannies, I was with old people, old tannies crying, and uh, just one lady reaching out and said, "You need." And she was nagging me the whole time, "You need to come to church. If you don't come to church, this is going to happen. You have to go to church. You have to come and see." And that's, and uh, I, I had so many excuses, but just, just a, a, a short just description. She said she never gave up on me, and I think that that was the thing. And the moment I stepped into that, uh, into that. Um, into that church, one encounter, and that's I think when when me and my wife started to 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 think God, but what is it that you want to do in this next season? And he said, but go back to your own life, 
and I asked her, how did you meet Christ? My own wife, I asked her, how did you meet Christ? And we came up with this one thing, one encounter. There was only one encounter and that transformed our lives. One encounter with no. Jesus and that will be now. Like I said, all, no. obviously we always, um, we always want more. But the thing, it only takes one encounter. And uh, uh, it wasn't a special day. For me, it was the greatest day of my life. But for other people, it was just another day. But what I was trying to say is, it only takes one encounter to transform your life. And the moment your life gets transformed, you need to impact a generation. You need to impact your people next to you. And I think that's the great commission. Is first of all, first me. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to other people. So um, I think I love what you're saying. It's, it's only it only takes one encounter because that happened to me. That happened to her. And I'm pretty sure it happened to every person that got born again. Uh, only one encounter with Jesus. So we're just going to ask a few people to um, to uh, to ask some questions. I know there's a few there's a few people here. I know um, while we're here, um, people ask me. So how do we how do I approach people if they if they're not open? I want to do some evangelism. Uh, my heart is for evangelism. I want to reach out. I want to be the disciple that makes disciples. Um, how do I approach people first of all, um, and, and how do I how do you deal with the rejection? I know it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a level question. I, I, I'm, it's not a deep yeah. question, but just for normal people like like me uh, that yeah. try to do oh. evangelism. So how do you deal with the rejection? Um, how many times do you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, Scott, today this is going to be the day I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to even if they reject me. I just remember that they rejected Jesus first, and that's why I'm going to go up and I'm going to I'm going to do it. So um, just just tell us more or less. Um, I know you got a great story of how you how you uh, started doing this. So please. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, we all good? It was. Can you hear me? God, you're back. I think it's. Is it? There you go. Is it, fr is it freezing here? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, it, keeps fr it keeps freezing my end. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, no, yes. you're fine. Okay, great. So two, two parts to that question. The first part is this, you approach an individual and they're not interested. So you were saying, what do we do if I go and share and they don't want to know? Well, jo uh, Jesus said in John 6, 44, he said, nobody can come to me unless the father draws them. So if you're working in partnership with the Holy Spirit, then you're allowing him to reveal who's ready. So we share, he shakes, like I said. So when I approach an individual, if they're not ready, um, if they won't stop for me, so I, I engage them in in our in our nine point tool, you know, which I I do pretty much every day because I haven't found a way that causes me to bear more fruit. And until then, I will keep using it. So I use this in every scenario of life. And as I as I stop an individual, if they say, "Hey, I'm not interested," then I let them go because they're not being drawn. I believe that if they were being drawn, they would stop for me because I live my life in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So I trust Him that He's gone before me and that he will lead the way. So that's the first part of the question. So the second part is, am I offended? Am I rejected? Well, I'm not rejected because they're not being drawn. So, so why would I be rejected? If, I, if I've put all my trust, if my eyes are on the Holy Spirit and not me, then I'm not going to feel rejected. If my eyes are on me, then I'm going to put the, the, the responsibility on me. I need to get that person to respond. I need to make them stop and listen. That, so where many believers are going wrong is that they're, they're looking at themselves and they're not looking at the Holy Spirit. And the reason they do this is because they don't understand that evangelism is partnership. And when you understand that, it changes everything. Jesus was the Lord of the harvest, not, not me or not you. So I'm going to allow the Lord of the harvest to do what he's going to do. I'm not trying to do his job for him. I'm going to let him prepare hearts and draw them in. And then I'm going to work in, in, tandem, in tandem and in partnership. So if you share and he shakes and everybody's an apple on a tree, then what happens is one of three things. The apple falls, it moves a little or it doesn't move at all. One of those three things is going to happen. And all you have to do in partnership as a co-laborer, as somebody who's working alongside for the Lord of the harvest, 
is you just play you just play your part accordingly. They either they're ready or they're not ready, and if they're not, you move on to the next person. You don't debate in, in a in a, a verbal wrestling match of apologetics. I don't recommend that. I would say move on. It's the difference between a sower and a reaper. A sower wants to engage in an hour debate. A reaper says, I'm moving on to find my apple that's ready and I'm going to catch it. So it's the difference between a seasoned sower and a relentless reaper. Jesus at the door is what we call a reaping tool. So the worst thing that will happen when you reap is you will sow. That's the worst thing that will happen. But you'll be prepared to reap and you'll be prepared to catch the apple. For many Christians, they're not prepared to catch. They're not equipped, sorry, to catch the apple. They're equipped to caress the apple or to keep the apple company, but not equipped to catch it. And what we're trying to do is enable you to catch. Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, <laughs> that I, I, I love profound. that. Yeah, I think most of the people, I think when we go in, we, we want to sow, but we need to yeah. reap. So that's, wow, well, that that's profound. I really like that. So, Scott, there's, there's two questions quickly. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Kunrod asked here, which perspective have believers misinterpreted the most about evangelism? Um, so for me, I, if I can interpret the question, so what do you think that people uh, mostly uh, misunderstand about evangelism? I, I think probably what they, what they misunderstand is that it is, they don't think it's for them. So that they don't understand the Great Commission, that, that it was given to disciples and not evangelists. When Jesus, when the Holy Spirit fell in the upper room and Jesus said, go and wait for, for the promise of my Holy Spirit. 120 disciples gathered, gathered in a room. Now, I think the odds are to say that out of 120 people, not all of them were type A personality, gung-ho Let's change the world for Jesus. They were not all that extrovert. They were not all like Peter type people. The chances are that there were a, a large number who were introverted, uh, a large number who were, I'm just going to stay behind and make the tea. I'm going to run the, the screen where the words go, I'll do cameras this week. <clears throat> you know what I mean? That, that, there's going to be people who are behind the scenes kind of people. Except the Holy Spirit didn't seem to think that that was, um, that that was a game changer. He didn't seem to think that that disqualified them from uh, that their particip participation in the Great Commission because when the fire fell, it fell on 120 heads. It didn't miss people. It didn't say, actually, you're not called to do this. You're a bit more of a worship leader. Uh, you, you just welcome people. You make the coffee. Now, what he said actually was 120 flames for 120 heads because the Great Commission was given to every single uh, disciple. Some people are gifted more uh, and have more of a, an office, carry an office of, of a gifting of an evangelist. But that doesn't mean that we're not all called to go. So I think <clears throat> that's a big one. And then another one would be uh, people think that people don't want Jesus. Uh, but Christians are like, well, they don't really want him. Uh, I, I, I know a lot of, there's a lot of Christians who could give you 20 reasons why somebody wouldn't want the Lord instead of two reasons why they would. So what we need to do is we need to try and teach them that actually, man, you haven't even, done, but most of these people have never even tried. So once we break through the fear, break through these lies, these misconceptions, they can see that actually people are crying out for Jesus. They're crying out for him. They don't even know it's him often that until you introduce them to him, but they are crying out for a touch of the savior. We, uh, we just need to show them. Um, and, and then let me, let me just expand that quite uh, uh, shortly. Uh, quickly off the back of that answer what i just said there as well here's another reason this is what happens with christians they go and they'll share the gospel they'll share maybe three four times and then nobody responds so what they think is this nobody wants jesus that's the that's the basis for that that mentality they've tried it 20 years ago and nobody wanted him nobody wants jesus where i live or i'm not gifted are the two things the devil lies to them about but what they did is they they went and shook it. They went and shared and the Holy Spirit shook, but they were four apples that weren't ready to fall. So instead of moving on and finding apples that were, they gave up. And this is the problem, some of the problems that we have. <clears throat> well, yes. uh, this is an interesting question. Um, uh, Scott, if you can maybe uh, just elaborate on this. How do you share the gospel with someone that is, they are full of religion? 
they they say that they are Christians, but they they are not spirit filled. How do you approach a person like that? You know they are not spirit filled, although they say they are Christians. Yeah, good question. I mean, Jesus at the door was birthed in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is is like South Africa. It's a religious uh, nation. There's a lot of people who believe in God, but there's obviously many who don't know him personally, you know? So, so the context of our, of our tool was birthed in that soil of that, of that culture, which is why we have a lot of things like, you know, he's there somewhere. You don't know him personally. You know, we say praying is like talking through the door. You know, he's there somewhere, but you don't know him personally. So we're making a clear distinction through our process of religion and relationship. So uh, religion is um uh, the way i would describe it it's kind of like this uh, religion is is religion happens outside the door and relationship happens inside so there's a lot of people you know jesus is knocking on the door of their heart there's a lot of people who know he's there and they have a an awareness of him being there they have a belief in him but re relationship happens when they open the door and he comes in so there's that distinction so what i would do is i, I challenge the individual if i find an individual who who falls in that category, I would challenge them in love, but I'd be very straight with them. This is the way I would describe it. If I come across an individual and they're kind of saying the things like, oh yeah, I'm good with God. And, you know, I believe. And, uh, and you're like, well, you know, you discern they're not saved. They're not born again. They don't really have that relationship. How do you uh, navigate that? So this is how I would do it. I would say to them, if you died tonight, could you say with 100% guarantee you go to heaven? Now, 99.9% .9 of those individuals, if they're being honest with themselves, um, will say, no, I, I don't know that. And often what they'll say is, nobody knows that. You see, they've never been stamped with the seal of salvation. They don't have the assurance of eternity. Now, if they're not ready, they'll say, oh yeah, I know, I know. And they're just fobbing you up because because they're not interested. But those who are genuine will say, no, I, I don't know that. So then I describe it this way. I say, hey, if I give you my phone as a gift and you go home and a family member says, is that your phone? What would you say? You'd say, yeah, because when you receive a gift, it becomes yours. Now, Jesus said in the Bible, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That means this. Mm -hmm. When you get it, you know you have it. I can tell you 100% guarantee I'm going to heaven when I die. What you're doing is talking through a door. And I allow the Holy Spirit to reveal that truth uh, in, in that way. And that often really, really cuts through. Okay, awesome. Well, wow. oh. so there's another question. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, it's, it's connected with this one. Uh, Alicia asks here, what do you do when someone says they want Jesus in their life, uh, but their action states differently? Uh, I think, like you said, in Northern Ireland, South Africa, we are a, we are a proud uh, religious nation. Uh, so many people know Jesus Christ, uh, or they don't know him. They heard of him. Uh, they go to church, been to church, um, uh, maybe driven past church, and now all of a sudden we are Christians. Uh, so I think that what she's asking is, so what do you do if you ask them if they want to accept Jesus Christ, but listen, the action doesn't really, um, really, uh, well, it doesn't state that they, they want to. So how do you approach that? Yeah, good question. So I think what I'm hearing in that question is, is the individual like accepts the Lord verbally, maybe in that moment, but then doesn't follow through. Is that kind of what, what, what the question is? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. yes. Yes. So, so they're saying with the mouth, they're saying, I want the Lord, I want to follow him, but then they don't change the lifestyle that they don't follow. So <clears throat> the, the last thing we say on our tool is this, turn from the road you're on without Jesus, change direction and follow him. So what did Jesus say to his disciples? He said, come follow me. And they left their nets, they left their trade, they left their job. Well, what did Jesus say when he called Zacchaeus down the tree? He said, come and eat with me, uh, uh, come and follow me. I want you you know, I want your life. You open your home, you open your heart. So what he was saying is, again, same thing. Now, there's a difference between being up the tree and saying, Jesus, I see you, I hear you, I want you. There's a difference between responding up from the tree and then coming down the tree and saying, come to my home. So what happens is the, the process of repentance. So when an individual accepts Jesus, it's a process of repentance. Now, I've led many people to the Lord. I've even seen like powerful encounters like where grown men in the street crying and I'm thinking, there's my disciple. And then I never hear from them again. So in that moment, what happened is their heart, that they were, there was a response to a degree, but it wasn't enough to make a disciple uh, out of them. They, they didn't surrender enough 
to uh, to count that cost, you know. So um, and and sometimes that's a process. Sometimes that will take time. You know, Billy Graham he said it this way. You know, um, he talked about how there's there's four responses. He said when people respond to my crusades, this, there's a four a four kind of tier response. There's the response of the um, it is a it is conception. It's a stage of conception. Then there's a second where it is a gestation, and then there's a third that it is birth. And the fourth, where it's completely spurious, there's nothing to it at all. So there's the the, fourth, the the conception moment, the gestation, the growth, and then the birth, and then and then it's just it was nothing. He said that is what I figured out that happens when people respond to my crusades. It's one of those four things, you know. So I'd say it's the same on the streets too. We don't know the heart of a man; they can respond to the gospel, but we don't know how deep it goes. What when we know the the way we know that is by their their following steps. So we've got to allow that individual to take those following steps. And it's going to be a fight for sure. There's going to be a battle for a soul. I know for my life, uh, when, I'm, when I came to the Lord, there was a fight for my life. Uh, I, I felt it physically. So we've got to encourage the individuals to come closer, but you can't do it for them. You can't change their heart. You can give them every opportunity and you can fight for them. And I encourage you to do that because fighting for people is, is reaching out to them constantly. Uh, really, really saying, hey, okay, you didn't come these past three weeks, but I want to invite you again. There's an element of that. But then there's also, it comes down to them, do they really want it? Yes. Now, so what, what the Lord really shared with me is that um, at the end of the day, we can do a lot of things. We can try a lot of things. But at the end of the day, it's the, it's the, it's the receptiveness of the heart um, that will, it, it, the, the message of the cross is really, is really easy. I know it sounds simple, and because it is that simple, it's still the power of salvation. God made it so easy that people that is very wise think it's foolish. So, um, uh -huh. and Jesus even himself said that. So, the gospel of Jesus is very easy. It's the receptiveness of the heart that is actually um, because I, I've heard people that say, "Listen, um, you, your church is not deep enough. Your message is not deep enough." Listen, the message of Jesus Christ is so is so easy. It's so shallow, but it's so deep. It will cost you everything. So um, I don't. I think for if I, I just want to add on to what you're saying now, is that many times we are not we are not in control. God said He will save a soul, but we need to make disciples. It is not your power. It's not in our power to save anybody. We can we can make disciples and we can love people. That's it. So I think um, many times that's one of the things that people disqualify disqualify themselves because they don't. Um, they feel that, listen, um, I've tried it two, two times, three times, four times, and, uh, and people, they don't want to. But here's the thing. Maybe if somebody, well, you got a, maybe you got a grandma that, that was praying for you or whatever, a, a mom that was praying for you. If she gave, gave up on, given up on you uh, the weekend before you got saved, you would have been in a lot of trouble. So what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say is that even though I know that there's a time that you say, listen, I can't do it anymore. But here's the thing. One more time. Yeah. One more time. So, uh, uh, Scott, it's, I, I know you've you got a book coming out. Um, so if you can just quickly, uh, we got we, uh, past our time, but you're evangelist. So I know that you don't, you don't care about time. You, work on a, you don't work on a watch. <laughs> you work on a calendar. So, um, um, uh, so quickly, in a, in a few mo minutes, just tell us what the book is all about. Uh, where can they get all your stuff? How can they download the the app, like I said, the app works, guys. It's not it's not something that we that we just say. It really works. Um, some of the people that I saw here now on the on, on the comments, they know it works. We've been using it in our church. We've been using it on the streets. The, she's been using it in in the in, in in Thailand. It works seriously. So quickly, just tell us where. How can they um, maybe follow you? How can they um, just get a hold of, of of the app? Is it available on the on what app store, uh, I don't know, what, what Play Store, whatever. Yeah. Just quickly tell us how your book, um, how can they maybe audio book, what's the book all about? So we're going to give over to you quickly and then we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, so so for the app, uh, the app we have about 30 languages on the app as well. It's a free app. We have about 30 different languages. And um, also the idea of it is, is that it's something you have your phone with you at all times. So we have physical hard copy cards, but with the app, it means you've got it all the time, everywhere you go, you go to the gas station, you go to store, you know, whatever, you've always got it with you. So that's uh, that's really a real powerful tool. 
and on the app you can read you can bring up the card so you can read it and you, you can show them the image and then you can read the steps um but what's really key is we have a new feature which is a new believers in, info a follow-up section so when you meet an individual well let me give you an example last week i was in in the store and i led this uh, individual to lord a few individuals and what i did with them all is i got the name i wrote it down electronically in my app and then i wrote down their phone number in the two sections i hit send um or save sorry and what it does it sends them an mms message of the follow-up card and then it stores their contact into the new believers info section in your app so then you have a list of all the people you've led to the lord all their names and all their numbers stored in your app all you've got to do is subscribe uh, register an account um which again is free and then you just type in your uh, you sign in in order to, to access these features so once you have that that's a real great feature and in terms of the book yeah our book is called the uh, evangelism made easy jesus at the door so when i tr when i travel i probably give away 60 percent of my teaching you know uh, because of time restraints and different things like that so i'm probably giving about 60 percent this book has i would say uh, close to 100% of what the Holy Spirit has given me, uh, teachings, trainings, uh, you know, just nuggets of truth, or the, the things the Holy Spirit has revealed to me, some of the stuff I've touched on here briefly, uh, stories of transformation, uh, that there's a chapter about launching a new believers group and the steps in order to do that. So really, it encompasses the whole thing, it kind of chronicles all of what the Lord has given to me over these past number of years. So it's a great resource for, for pastors, uh, cell group leaders in order to take individuals through as well so you can get that in south africa south Af africa is one of our uh, nations one of our primary nations uh, that we've uh, listed for our publishers to be able to resource so we have um, distributors in south africa that are, are going to be distributing the book in local stores and places like that so i can send um, uh, you guys the links for that stuff at the moment i think there's a deal they're doing as well where you can order if you order 20 bucks or more you get 40 percent off so there's a whole bunch of things that our publishers are doing so it comes out on uh, september 29th but you can pre-order now so i can get you the relevant information for that and you guys can uh, can get it amen okay. amen and then so, we have just to say as well we have a four daniel calendar wrote the forward as well for it and we have a, a bunch of amazing amazing people uh voices in christianity today who have endorsed the book also Awesome. Yeah, so I just want to, from my side, I want to say, like, I started off this uh, this interview and said, this is the real deal. He's not just someone, he, he doesn't talk, and he was speaking about uh, Daniel Kalinda. I saw Todd White, all those guys, they are guys that they don't just talk. That's that's their life. That's a lifestyle. So I know people get, crit they get criticized for all of this stuff, but I can tell you now, uh, most of them, the people that with the most critique, the guys that do the least, the, 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 the least. Mm -hmm. so... Um, I want to tell you that this guy, these guys, and, I, and he doesn't pay me for this, um, so I'm not, I'm not promoting him. I'm just saying sometimes you, you, you don't know who's talking to you, and sometimes you don't know who's actually in company of, in the company of who you're sitting with. So uh, this is, this is a, a, a well, a great man of God. So I'm going to ask Scott, and I know I'm not, I'm not the, the, the best. I don't like this really, um, but um, I don't do it even at my church. But I'm going to ask you out uh, just to while you're there. I'm going to ask people, maybe they, they listen to this broadcast, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day afterwards on, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, maybe people share this message. Um, maybe they want to listen to the at the churches. Um, but I'm going to ask you something, if it is possible for you, um, just to pray over people today. And are we going to stand in agreement? And are you going to just pray for people to get activated? First of all, you know, you have to, we have to get, well, use every opportunity to get uh, the message out. So first of all, I'm going to ask you just to pray for people quickly um, to maybe to accept Jesus Christ because we don't know where this message is going to, um, but we got an obligation towards the gospel of Jesus to get the message out and give people opportunity to meet him. And then afterwards, I'm going to ask you to pray for uh, maybe some evangelists, maybe some, no, yes, not evangelists, maybe disciples that can make disciples because that's the thing. We are called for discipleship. That's it. We are not called Amen. for evangelism. We are called. There's a there's a higher calling than the fivefold ministry, and that's the, mm -hmm. that's the calling of a disciple. I can tell you now, mm -hmm. gee, that's when Amen. Jesus spoke to everybody when he said, "Go out and make disciples." So, Scott, I'm going to ask you to just to get a quick prayer uh, to get people saved, 
and then afterwards we're going to send an agreement with you and um, they'll just activate people to maybe just just get out tomorrow we're standing queues all over the place maybe it's just a time a good place to to uh, yeah. to introduce someone to jesus so those two things quickly if it is possible yeah. for you um i know yeah well we have to yeah. we have to make use of every opportunity yeah amen yeah yeah so if you are tuning into this broadcast and and you know maybe you're like an individual that we referenced earlier on you believe in jesus uh, you maybe attend church sometimes or you maybe you don't but either way this is the way I, I can describe it in the best time in the most succinct uh depth is just to describe it the way i, I often do every day which is the image of jesus uh, where he's knocking on your heart but you have the handle on the inside so he won't come in unless you invite him in and praying maybe you pray before you go to sleep maybe you pray in emergencies but praying is like talking through the door you know he's there somewhere but you don't know him personally and what he wants and what you need if your life's going to change not only temporarily on this earth but eternally in in the afterlife what you need is you need to meet the person of jesus not just to know about him so i'll describe it this way if you had a backpack on your back with all your sins in it would it be heavy now i'm sure if you acknowledge you're human there's going to be something in that backpack there is nobody on this earth who is perfect the bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of god's glory that backpack represents your debt with God and it stops you having a relationship with him. Now, if you owed the bank 150,000 rand and I gave you a check for that amount and you deposited the check in your account, your debt would be cleared. And you would like me, I would be your new favorite American friend because I've just cleared your debt. And that is what Jesus did for you on the cross. He wrote you a check, signed it in his blood, not a pen. It cost him everything. He thought that you were worth it. And he wrote this check in his blood to clear your debt. And he's standing at the door of your heart today, wanting you to cash it in. So my question is this, if Jesus were there in front of you right now, would you let him in? And if you said yes to that, then I want to explain about the wind. You see, when we think about the wind, we can't see the wind, but we can feel it. And Jesus is the same. We don't see him, but we can feel his presence and we could see the effects when he is moving. So I want to pray for you that you could feel his presence right now. So Holy Spirit, I ask you that, you're, uh, that you would reveal Jesus to these individuals right now. I thank you, Lord, that you are omniscient, that you're omnipresent. I thank you that you're in South Africa uh, right now, in every home of every life who's watching this, just as you are in America right now. Thank you that you are there. And I pray right now that these people would feel your spirit. I ask you that they'd feel your call. I feel they'd feel the shepherd's voice calling them back into the flock calling them back into his arms lord i just pray holy spirit that you'd awaken those individuals in this moment that they would sense the presence of of love of real love and they would know the person of truth revealing himself to them right now change the atmosphere and let them sense your spirit in jesus name now if you felt god's touch if you felt warmth inside you maybe felt tingling you felt emotional that is God's presence, and he's saying, I want you. So if you have the faith to believe that Jesus is here right now, there's only one condition on your part. Jesus did all that for you, but he asks you for one thing. You turn from the road you're going at the moment without Jesus, and you change your direction in order to follow him. That is your cost. That is your decision. He won't force you to do that. But if you want to do that, then he wants you to do that. So if you want to leave that road you're on, the Bible calls it the wide road, and it will take you to hell. He wants you to turn and enter the narrow path that leads to life. You see, there's only two roads in life. There's a narrow or the wide. And many believers, there's many on the wrong road believing in the right God. And we want to turn you around from the wrong road onto the right road. So if you want to follow Jesus, not just believe, but follow, then you just echo this prayer from your heart with your mouth. Just say, Jesus, I choose to follow you and make you the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, give me power to live for you all my days. Amen. And if you prayed that, I'd encourage you to reach out to somebody, uh, reach out to, to these amazing uh, people, amazing pastors, or, or someone that you may know, a friend, or someone uh, who, who you can, who they can help you take that next step. Because now you've accepted the Lord. It's very important that you begin to move in a new direction. And Lord, I just ask you for those that are watching who are believers, for those disciples, Lord, I pray in this time more than ever, that you would awaken them to be salt and light. Lord, I thank you for the nation of South Africa. 
I thank you that you are doing wonderful things in these days. I thank you for amazing uh, pastors um, like my dear friends here, Lord. I thank you that you are doing wonderful things through people in these days. And I ask you that you would awaken the sleeping giant of the church in the area of evangelism and may it begin here. I pray for people who are tuning in right now. I ask you that you inspire them and awaken them and give them a fresh touch of your spirit. Lord, that you would show them and shake them from their slumber and reveal that life is short, that people's lives are dying, uh, people are dying every day, that we don't have time to sit in buildings, but we must go and we must be the hands and feet of you. Jesus, you said in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, that I came to seek and save that which was lost. So Lord, I pray that you'd inspire us to see that we are your hands and feet, that we're not called to just see people saved, we're called to, to seek them out first. So Lord, would you inspire a generation of seekers who would go and find people. Thank you, Lord. I pray for your fire of heaven to breathe. And I just release all that you put inside of me, Lord. I just give it away as I freely have I received, freely I give. So Lord, I just give to all those that are watching. I pray double portion upon them. I pray a, f uh, a level of fruitfulness that has never been seen in South Africa in these days for souls. Let it be for your glory and your glory alone in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hope everybody Amen. that um, that is so powerful. So everybody that just um, to just grab a hold of that. Um, I think the first person that you see tomorrow, um, Horny, I think Uncle Angus always got a thing. He says, um, you need to, to, to say to two people that you do not know, tell them about Jesus. So I'm, I'm going to encourage people today. The best way to spread the gospel is by opening your mouth. So I think Amen. that's 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 a good place to start so um i challenge people now um like i said the activation can only activate it's like moving a big ship the only way you can move a ship is by moving the ship and the, it's the only way mm -hmm. to turn direction is to move the ship so i'm going to encourage people to get to a place that you just start moving step by step but just do it just get to a place and say god no more will the devil lie to me because i don't have a spirit of fear i will go out and i will speak and i will preach the gospel because that's what you expect of me. So um, uh, that's that's a disciple making disciples. So Scott, I really want to thank you. Thank you for all the words. I, I think we can talk for five, six, seven hours, yeah. maybe. Um, I, I really love you. I really love what you do and uh, what you do for the kingdom, um, really advancing the kingdom. So I really, I, I love you, brother. I want to say that uh, um, you made an impact in our church. You made an impact in my life and my family. So um, we love you. Uh, God bless you, and um, I really thank you for everything that you uh, that you for spending time with us. So that's that's amazing for us, and uh, I hope everybody that is watching the the, the stream really uh, learns something, and they not just learning something, do something about it. And then I really want to I really want to thank um, our team that made it possible, Krishna, um, all the technical guys, um, Frank. Who I want to really I want to lift him out and say, listen, Frank, uh, Yedia. Although you guys have been working hard, Krishna, you've been working so hard, but um, I know we always ask of people the impossible, but you always you always just do it. And, and sometimes sooner um, a I really want to thank everybody that is on, on our team. And uh, Scott, you really made an impact even in our team. So um, God bless you, my brother. And um, everybody else watching, God bless. Thank you. Thank you. See you Thanks next for week, having same me. Same time, same place. Thank it was a so great much. honor. Yes. Likewise. Bless you guys. God bless.